Hello, welcome back to my bench. If this is your first time here, hello, welcome. And um, don't forget to subscribe down there if you like what you see. Uh, and if you can or want to support me on Patreon, that would be much appreciated. Today, we've got a kit to put together. I've got a reason for this. This uh, is an NJM2035 stereo encoder and multiplexer basically what it does is it takes audio in um, left and right uh, multiplexes it mixes it makes a 19 kilohertz stereo pilot and pokes it out the other side as composite for going into the back of a transmitter most transmitters accept composite output or input and um, is I have a reason for doing this because I get stuff to uh, to fix that uh, requires a composite uh, input to work correctly or for me to see it or hear it. And uh, rather than setting up something huge like a, you know, Optimod 8100A or something like that, um, I found this little kit online and uh, I decided I'd make one of these well uh, I'll show you what it is I mean it's basically it's pretty simple it's one uh, 2035 D I C uh, and a clock matter of fact here's the schematic and it's um it, it's it's just pretty simple it's it's right pretty much right out of the um, uh, the book the, the manual for the yeah, data, data sheet for this 2035. Uh, the only thing that's kind of hard to find on this is that little uh, crystal down there. It's a 38 kilohertz crystal. And um, uh, if you take 38 and divide it by 2, you got 19. That's, and the 38 for the, uh, you know, for the transmitter also. So, what do we got here? Well, let us open the bag and find out. Hmm. It's pretty complete, pretty simple. We'll take a look at it, see what it is. There's just a bunch of little parts, and they're uh, and a board, an IC, and a um, IC socket that actually is uh, both sides. It's not a really expensive socket, but it's it's okay. We got a little cap, uh, a uh, variable resistor couple little caps, um, electrolytics, bunch of resistors, bunch of fixed capacitors, and um, there we go, bunch of fixed capacitors, and the little bitty crystal. So, it's not going to be a very difficult uh, kit to put together, I don't think. Let's see if I can get a little more light in here on the subject, because it's, yeah, it's better. All right. So basically, uh, it says to um, to uh, in order to build this thing, you want to put the smaller ones on first, which is uh, pretty normal. It, it, it's it's it, it makes things easier if you just put the low hang the low low ones on first, and then you can kind of build up in levels as you go. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So they are not marked on the board as far as value goes. But they, uh, the book or the schematic here does tell me which one it is, what's what. So, let's see. Um, let's get started. Um, let's see, R1 and 2 or 4. Well, let's, I'm going to have to have a, a, uh. meter here because I have a hard time reading these um, these resistors that are you know five bands mostly because they're so small and thirdly because I'm um, uh, not <laughs> I can't see all that well anyway I, you know it's, I'm old what do you expect so let's get the uh, let's get the meter up here and we'll start putting these resistors on. 
And this particular resistor is 10.5K. 10.5K. And we got a 10.5K on the list? No, we got one. 10K. All right. Uh, that's a half a K off. That's not real close. Anyway, that is C... Uh, our R3. R3 is 10K. And R3 will be right here. It's interesting. It's, uh, the board's plated through, but <laughs> there's nothing, there's no, no traces on the front, on the top. All right. Oh, well, there's one. And there's the next one, and it is come on. Huh. Having a hard time reading this. Forty seven K. Yeah. What is going on now? My meter can't be going bad on me. That is definitely not 47K. That looks like, if I can read it here, brown something, black something. Uh, maybe these are not the best bet for doing this. We'll just use regular meter leads. And see if that helps any. All right. There. Forty seven K. Eh. There is no forty seven K. What is wrong with my meter? So that says 80K. So that's 82K, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that would be gray, red, black. Okay. Okay, so that's 82K. And that is what? R4 is 82K. We'll go by the process of elimination here as to what's not in the resistors. This one we got 47K. And that would be R1 and R2. And those are the same. I don't know how they get 47. Oh, I guess that's a yellow band. Wow. Yeah. That, if there's a yellow there, I'm like, I mean, I can't barely see it. So that's R1 and R2 is 47K. It is possible to get a bad resistor, you know. I've had it happen. Let's measure this again. Eh, 46.3. All right. I guess they're... I don't know what the accuracy of these things is, but it ain't much. So, yeah, 47K input with a 1 nanofarad across it. So, I guess that's, that's, that's right, I guess. Okay. Just weird.
Don't put too much on when you first when you're doing these things because you'll uh, it makes it really hard. I've done it where I put everything on the board and then went through and tried to solder it. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you, it makes uh, makes for a messy job and very much more difficult than you would uh, than you would think. And there's no reason to put yourself through all that. Just uh, just do a few at a time. All right. All right, good soldering tips here. When you solder something and you cut them off, don't cut down into your solder bump here where it comes on. Just run your run your nippers, nippers, not those big old side cutters, but get yourself a good set of nippers. These are not a good set of nippers, hopefully for Christmas. Um, and run it right down to where it hits the top right there and then cut it off. Uh, if you go down inside of there, you'll weaken weaken the joint. And uh, sometimes they will come back to bite you. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. All right. So next let's do the uh, capacitors. Oh, these are fun. Okay, so this is a... One oh four, I think. One oh four, so that would be see two, three, nine, and ten. It's a one hundred nanofarad. So let's see, there's a one oh four. These are very small. There, whoops. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to bash into you. Uh, there's a 104. Yep, there's a 104. Uh, that's 102. This is 102. These are much bigger. Um, looks like we're missing a cap. Well, there's a little bitty, little bitty 104. It's a whole different animal. Wow, what are you? 101. And this is a 10 picofarad. All right. Um, okay, well. Yeah, so 104, in this riveting uh, C2, it's right here, that is a 104, C3, I believe also, is a 104, I try to make the capacitors and things that you want to read all go the same direction. So that if you're looking at the board and you have to work on, work on the thing, you can get it. Um, let's see. That would be C9 and C10. C9 is there in C10. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, so here is C10. which is a 104 it goes that way and then you got C9 which is a very they like wedged it in there I'm trying to get in so I can see here I got new camera set up sorry about that anyway it's right there and that is right there and it just barely fits so they uh, they gave you the right sized capacitor it just much smaller than the others. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happened there. The thing just stopped. 
anyway, they gave you um, C10 or C9 over here. It's very small. They gave that to you um, as a very small component, uh, but it is the same. Well, a trick for new new players, I guess, just to confuse somebody. See you. Let's see. Maybe I'm using what I'm trying to do is here. I'm trying to use this program called Droid Cam, and uh, it pretty. It's a nice little program. I like it, but it, I just noticed it happened to stop at 15 minutes, almost 15 minutes exactly. It quit recording um, video kept I kept the audio going for a while because that's on different microphone but it whoops ow one of these days I'm gonna have to invest in a decent little um, holder for um, you know for, for, for the you know, PC board holder I printed one but I, I don't like it because you have to pull the thing out and turn it over. Someday I'll buy one. Well, that's cool. Let's just see another thing here. i got to put my camera on my phone on Do Not Disturb or something. All right, so I got all those in there. Yeah. Take all those noises out and post, I guess. All right. Well, there's those capacitors in there. Now we got 102s. And those are C1 and C4. So C1 is up here. Okay. C4 is down here. Those are all on the inputs. And I can go with this one. And this is a 101. That's C6, and C6 is right here, okay, and then a 10 picofarad, which is C7, which is right here. That's part of the crystal oscillator, all right. Yeah, pretty easy kit. I mean, the board's built quite well. I keep hitting you, and I'm sorry. <sighs> and yes, I did. I did buy the professional version of Droid Cam. It, it's I, I like it because it's um. It let, lets me use my phone. And my phone is a better camera than my camera, which is sad. But I can't, I don't know. Fortunately for me, my phone's a pretty good phone. <laughs> Sometimes I think maybe they're, they're going with... Phones make better cameras than they do phones, whereas the, or make, they make better texting devices than phone devices, which is a shame because we'll cut that one just a little short, but not too far. Um, in my opinion, a phone's major function should be phone. All right, well, there's all those guys in there. What's next? Um, this little, this little guy here. These, this is a um, <laughs> crystal. 
38 kilohertz crystal and they are quite small this one is smaller than most wow this is pretty I'm just gonna sort of shape in the leads here just a little bit okay and put it right in here I have some people ask me what, what I run my uh, soldering irons at. This one, the little one, is at about 395 Celsius. And my, uh, my other one, my big one, is at 700 Fahrenheit. Seems to be the best, as far as I can tell for all around if I'm doing something very very fine and very very touchy I'll cut down until about uh, about 350 but if you do that you can't use uh, non uh, this stupid no lead solder um, it's it won't work it, it takes more to go okay so there's that guy in there I guess we'll put the pot back on here there's the potentiometer I don't know this is a toss-up between which one's bigger the pot or the I am recording right <laughs> okay um... The pot or the uh, IC socket. All right, there is a dent on one end of the IC socket, and it is right there. And it goes towards the. And it goes towards the dent on the board. There we go. The way I do IC sockets is I'll get them in there good and then I'll bend over either, well, the one of each corner and that'll hold it in there for me. And then I uh, tack them down. Tack one down good. Nah. And then make sure, give it a push with your fingers. Make sure it's seated good. It is. And then you can do the rest of them. Because he definitely hadn't been here yet. Yeah, I might should have have tinned those just a little bit because they were a little rusty. All right, now I got a couple of capacitors. This one is 33 at 16. Whoa, that is little. 33 is C8. And this one is uh, 10 at 35. All right, so 10 at 35 for the capacitor. 10 microfarads, so that's C5. That's C5. Did they bother to mark the plus? Yes. Plus on these is the long lead, unless you cut them off to even so that you can put them in breadboards, and then you have to look it up or look up the on it to see what it is. 
Um, plus, probably, yeah, because the negative is going to ground, and plus is going to pin uh, one, two, three. <clears throat> yeah, pin three. Yeah, three goes to ground through a 10 microfarad. And they have plus on here. It's very, very small. You can just barely see it. I'm keeping an eye on my uh, camera here. Is this jerking around real bad? I may not be able to use this camera for long videos. It seems to be a little bit unstable. See, it? I, mean, I can't tell. It looks kind of, to me, like it's jerking around. All right. All right. Well, I don't know. All we got to do is <laughs> get the half a mile of tape off of this guy. And plug them in. Wow, they wanted to make sure it did not fall out of there. And it, and it didn't. So they they succeeded. Beyond their wildest dreams. Oh, for crying out loud. Now it's stuck to the tape on the other end. There. All right, before you put these in, they come spread just a little bit, put them down, kind of just flatten the legs out a little bit so that they're straight across to each other and uh, all even. All right. And make sure you put this in the right way. The notch goes towards the notch, or whatever they've got describing the notch. And some of them are just a little dot that you can barely see. Some of them are a nice little cut notch. All right, well, there we go. That's in there. Wow, I did a basically a horrible job. That socket's not made really well. Oh, well, it'll be fine. Um, anyway, yep. okay, we're back to the way I was doing it before because I didn't like that, uh, the way that worked. It, it, it works, but it's not great. Um, all right, so what we got to do now is we have to put some connectors on here. I'm just going to use the wires that came off the kit here. Basically, this thing runs, well, it all runs off of one and a half volts. And according to the, um, according to the blurb that I heard about it, or read about it, it uh, draws almost nothing. So evidently it'll run off of a battery for quite a while. That's the positive voltage. And this is going to be ground. Um, yeah, this is temporary. I got to get me a, uh, I get a box for this. Because this I, I probably use, well, I'll use this quite a bit. I, every time I've ever had to have a composite output for something, I have had a, um, something here that would, uh, would put out a composite output. 
but I've got something now that doesn't. That's going to be another video. Um, okay, and this is out. Um, I actually, <laughs> this was kind of interesting. I had a guy, one of my viewers, sent me in just exactly the opposite of this to test because he says that he thinks there's something wrong with it that, um, he's getting some sort of a distortion in the left channel. I said, okay, because I, I knew a guy that, that had a uh, Optimod 8100 that I could use to, uh, to test the thing with. Unfortunately, <laughs> I got it in and it did not work. So, you know, <laughs> best laid plans, as they say. All right. So there's the output. Now we got to go for the input. And um, I didn't have... A spare card to uh, put into the thing to uh, to fix it and um, 8100 is pretty complicated piece of equipment and he did not want to pay to have it fixed so I had I got online real quick and ordered this and something interesting happened it uh, The post office said that, that, that they were going to deliver it and the day, you know, well, yesterday. And I said, oh, goody, it's here, it's here. Um, and it wasn't. I didn't, and I didn't understand why, and I was going to get on and say, where to go? And uh, one of my neighbors shows up at the door and says, uh, this was in my mailbox. And it's really interesting since her number is nowhere near mine. I must admit, we've been having a little bit of problems recently with um, mail. There are times when we won't even get any at all for several days. To the point where I actually signed up for um, this thing that they email you mail uh, every day when you're going to get it so that you can see what you're going to get. All right. There we got those hooked up. Now we're going to hook up uh, power. I got one and a half volts set up on the power supply here. And we're going to go with. B plus, I've got it current limited down to, oh, almost nothing. Let's take it, that's current limited to 60 milliamps, which should be just fine. And we'll give it a shot here. Nope, no short. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, well, that's good. Now we have to give it, feed it some sort of an input. Um, let's see, I gotta turn on. What do I want? Um, no, that's not what I want. Yeah, it is. Hang in there, folks. Um, Okay, so I need something for the function generator. I'm going to need two channels, aren't I? Yes. Alright, so there's one there. 
and one there. Okay. And, um, let's see. Okay. All right. Um, so I need something for the function generator, too. What do I have here? I got... Uh, well, that definitely won't work. That'll work. And uh, I suppose this will work. Okay, so we'll do this one here, and this one here, and go to our inputs. They are not balanced. I'm going to cut this one loose here. All right, so right will be this guy here. Yeah, this is a seriously hokey way of doing it. Um, left will be this one, but it's kind of what I got here. Okay. And uh, power goes to here. And I want... The one that fell on the floor. Yep, of course. This to go to the scope. Okay. And this is out and ground. All right. Um. All right. So I've got got it hooked up. It's uh, hooked up to the scope, and we have some audio now. Let's change uh let's put this one at 1k and we'll put this one at 400 yay that's working um and crank it down a little bit see what we got okay well that is definitely putting out what it's supposed to put out or what it's supposed to look like uh we can um get audio out of it. Let's see. I, usually you can. We'll find out. Yep. All right. All right. So let's see what, what this thing says to do as far as setting it up goes. Connect it to an FM transmitter. Um, yeah, no. All right, so I think this one we want to turn. Okay, left and right balance. Boy, they sound pretty close. I mean, I, I would have to go through this, but let's see if... Yep. Yep. Well, that's pretty much dead center. Wow. Wow. It worked. I mean, it's working beautifully. If we uh, put it back on the scope here, we can see that if we turn it, you'll be able to watch it change. Watch the, the audio on top of the carrier goes that way and goes that way. All right. Well, that's almost dead center. So this works perfect. It's um, I'm really happy. So here's what it says about this. It says that the uh, NJ2035 stereo encoder multiplexer uh, connects to mono FM transmitter and converts it to hi-fi stereo FM transmitter because it's both both of your levels are coming in. Um, you know, to your input, the chip is doing its thing. Uh, producing a 19 kilohertz um, 
uh, yeah, carrier, yeah, 19 kilohertz and 38, and it's putting it out as a combine of the two, all three, four things actually, uh, left, right, 38, 19, and feeding it out as composite, composite, all mashed together, uh, is what you're seeing on the scope. Um, uh, Features a rock-solid MPX pilot clock based around a 38 kilohertz crystal. Stereo encoder supplies 1.3 to 5 volts and draws 2 milliamps of current. And I can tell you that's true. It draws nothing. I can't even see it on my my uh, meter here. Uh, Built-in pre-emphasis um, enhances and produces crystal clear audio. When we broadcast in um, in radio and FM, we uh, we we pre-emphasize the highs, so that they get kind of forcibly put into the transmitter, and then the transmitter de-emphasizes it. Uh, but it keeps. But the fact that there's more there gives you more ability to get more highs out of your transmitter, and it it's, it's works in the United States. It's seventy five microseconds, and it's fifty overseas, I believe. Uh, NJM35 chip is manufactured by NJR Corporation or Japan. Uh, it's a sub subsidiary of New Japan Radio. They've been around for a long time and they make really, really good stuff. So, there you go. This is, uh, this came, this little kit, in case you're wondering, I'll put it down in the, the comment or the, the information under there, but it came from electronics-diy.com. They've got several little kits that you can, uh, buy. You, I could have bought uh, all the pieces parts for this for less uh, than what the chip, what this cost. It cost like twenty nine ninety five, and but it was worth it. It came with this crystal, which is harder to find than you think. Uh, the board is very well built. Uh, it's it's designed well. It's an easy kit to put together, and if you are a um, uh, you know LPFM. And you'd like to get uh, your stereo down to your transmitter uh, through, um, you know, through composite. This is a really, really good way to do it. So next, we are going to, the next video, we're going to take a look at this guy. It, um, let's see, I can turn off you and you. We're going to take a look at this. This is a little box built uh, by somebody, I don't know who, but it was down in um, Florida, I believe. And this thing has exactly the opposite of this thing in it. It takes the composite and puts it out to left and right um, audio so that um, you can um, feed a transmitter that does not have composite in or any other device that doesn't have composite in. So that's... That's the next video. So, hey guys, don't forget to uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell if you'd like to see more of this stuff. And uh, don't if I have a Patreon page if you'd like to see more about radio and other things. So, hey, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you till next time.